The history of aviation is a history of progress, successes, failures, the birth of some great brands and the collapse of others. We all know the names of today's industry leaders, but there are not many true aviation experts who remember the real classics. Hello Aviator Sky here, and today we will listen to the final song of the oldest German brand. Try to figure out why this song has died down, whether it can sound again, and answer the big engineering question. Is it possible to replace a turboprop with a turbofan without attracting the attention of psychiatrists? Today in the runway is the Dornier 328. The Dornier company was founded by the Franco-German aircraft designer Claude Dornier back in 1914, even before the First World War. And over the following decades, the company saw different things and created different things. The end of World War II hit the German aviation industry hard. Dornier became very modest in their ambitions, but continued to create light machines. And in the 1970s, together with Dassault, they even made a pretty good light attack aircraft, the Dassault Dornier Alpha Jet. Then they got to more interesting projects. The Dornier 228, which first flew in 1981, was a small twin-engine turboprop with a capacity of 19 passenger. The design of the 228 was rectangular, but interesting. The proud owner of an advanced supercritical airfoil wing, which gave the aircraft excellent flight performance and the love of aviators. Having seized a successful niche, Dornier decided to develop in this direction. The idea was to create an aircraft conceptually similar to the Doe 228, but with a larger capacity, about 30 seats. With retaining the features of the 228, the business seemed promising. In 1985, Dornier became part of Daimler-Benz. Yes, they had an aviation business, and it took a long time to persuade the big guys to allocate funding to the project. They got persuaded in 1988, when the project was given the green light and the official birth of the 328 model began. So, the Doe 328 is a twin-engine turboprop aircraft with a high wing, T-tail and tricycle landing gear. At first glance, nothing special, but only at the first glance. The plane is surprisingly fast, and this was done on purpose for a special niche. Dornier and Daimler positioned it as a full-fledged airliner, with a high level of comfort, decent range and most importantly speed. At the same time, remaining a turboprop, it was economical and flexible, could operate in hot and high conditions, even from unpaved airfields. The secret of success, of course, was supposed to be the supercritical airfoil, similar to the wing of the 228. Its peculiarity is in the airflow. While a regular wing in cross-section looks like a kind of half-drop, the supercritical airfoil has a more complex shape, with a slightly lower top and a curved bottom. This allowed the wing to maintain efficiency at high speeds. It was invented during World War II, but it took a very long time to be implemented. For example, it came to large commercial aviation only with such airliners as the Airbus A300 and Boeing 767. The Dornier idea was that the wing was large and straight, so the aircraft retained a decent load carrying capacity and the ability to fly at minimum speeds during takeoffs and landings, and the supercritical airfoil at the same time allowed it to fly quite fast. How fast, I will say a little later. The length of the plane is 21.3 meters, wingspan 21 meters, height is approximately 7.3 meters. The plane is actually quite large, larger than its analogs and slightly smaller than such machines as the ATR-42 or Dash 8, which are noticeably more spacious. Such dimensions are the result of the airliner aspiration. The cabin accommodated 30 to 33 seats in the three in a row layout, like its relatives but there is much more space in it. Comfort was also taken care of with a decent set of means to combat noise and vibration, scourge of turboprops. The aircraft's cockpit was quite decent, two seats, glass, with multifunctional displays, advanced automation and simply gorgeous windshield glazing, a beauty even by modern standards. The price of these bonuses is obviously the weight. The Doe 328 has a maximum takeoff weight of almost 14 tons, which is quite a lot, almost a ton more than the Saab 340 and a couple of tons more than the Embraer Brasilia. And this is despite the fact that Dornier tried very hard to reduce the weight of the structure. They introduced composites, fiberglass and light alloys. 
It took a long time to choose the power plant, and in the end, the proposal of General Electric and Garrett was rejected, accepting the Pratt Whitney 100 series family. New, with the corresponding risks, but promising. By the way, they chose correctly. These engines have proven themselves very well, and have become the fiery hearts of many turboprops, including the ATR and Dash 8 planes. The aircraft received a pair of PW119 engines, each with a capacity of 1,941 horsepower, and hard sail propellers, six bladed, which allowed them to reduce the rotation speed and noise level. We have an airliner here, let's not forget it should be quieter. Add to this an amazing airframe and you get the corresponding flight performance. The plane rose to an altitude of 7600 meters, flew a distance of up to 1300 kilometers, and its speed was as much as 330 knots. For a small turboprop this is a lot, on average plus 25 to 35 knots to the indicators of its counterparts. Work on the aircraft was proceeding at an active pace, and the first major result of engineers and salespeople was achieved in 1991, when the American regional carrier Horizon Air ordered 35 aircraft at once. This was despite the fact that the aircraft had not yet been demonstrated live. Trust. And the plane justified the trust. In December 1991, the prototype made its first test flight. The flight tests went according to plan, but were marred by an incident, so to speak. During the flight, the propeller of one of the engines broke off, damaging the fuselage. The plane overturned and lost significant altitude, but was able to regain control and land. Glory to the testers. It's not easy to hold a damaged, overturned plane, practically without an engine, especially if your whole life is flashing before your eyes. The incident required investigation and delayed the program. But in 1993, the DOE 328 finally received its coveted certificate and entered commercial routes. By the way, the practice has dispelled the doubts about reliability. During the entire period of operation to date, only a couple of incidents have happened to the aircraft, and these were rollouts beyond the runway. Operation at first was excellent, the aircraft was actively supplied and airlines liked it. There were even talks about further joint development of Donier and Fokker. And in South Korea, negotiations were held on the creation of a local assembly center for the DOE 328 for the Asian market. Dornier immediately began developing modifications that differed from each other mainly in takeoff weights and engine power, for more specific flight conditions. Further plans even included the creation of an enlarged model with 48 seats. But the situation changed very quickly, and not for the better. From the very beginning, the 328 was in quite tough competition with its classmates. In Europe alone, it was being produced alongside the Saab 340 and the Jetstream 41 from British airspace. And from above, it was being pressured by large regional turboprops, like the Dash 8 and ATR 42. Dornier did have good performance indicators and could well hold its position. But macroeconomics was also added to all this. The worsening global economic situation in the 1990s began to squeeze the market, making it incredibly difficult to compete. Added to this was the fuel revolution, which led to a revolution in the industry. Oil prices, which soared in the 1970s, became one of the catalysts for the active development of economical turboprop aviation of that time. Airlines could sacrifice some aircraft indicators for the sake of profitability. But in the 1980s and 90s, the cost of the coveted barrel dropped significantly, and regional jet aviation, represented by such airliners as the Embraer ERJ or Bombardier CRJ families, began to win back the market. It was an era of extinction for turboprops. From the entire fleet of models that existed at that time, only a few survived. The Saab 340, Jetstream 41 and Embraer Brasilia by and large didn't make it to the 21st century. The Dornier 328 found itself in the same position as its siblings. Demand had fallen sharply, leading to production cuts and the scaling back of many development projects. Except for one. Since turboprop aviation is dying out, they decided to switch to jets, or rather to transplant the plane to a jet engine. An unconventional idea that caused a lot of controversy. How can you take a turboprop and make it a jet, without remaking the entire plane? 
It's not just about the engine type. Turboprop aircraft are designed for low flight speeds. They are not so easy to accelerate. But here we return to the design. The DOE 328 was initially created specifically as a high-speed aircraft. The airframe outlines, streamlined surface, supercritical airfoil wing. These solutions, plus the replacement of engines, in theory made it possible to turn a high-speed turboprop into a relatively fast jet. This is how the DOE 328-300 project was initiated, which over time was renamed DOE 328 Jet. Meanwhile, the corporate structure was also changing. Daimler Benz's aviation division, Deutsche Aerospace, the parent company of Dornier, was experiencing financial difficulties, and in 1996 they sold the assets to American Fairchild Aircraft. And the newly formed Fairchild Dornier was enthusiastic about the idea of a Jet 328. They not only continued the work, but expanded it, envisioning the DOE 328 Jet, its larger 44-seat version, the DOE 428 Jet, which was supposed to compete with the ERJs and CRJs, and a new milestone in their business, the future flagship DOE 728, a completely new regional airliner that was supposed to challenge Embraer's main brainchild, the E-Jet family. They built a new aircraft sales center in San Antonio, USA, and the main plant remained in Germany, in Oberpfaffenhofen. Oh my, the natives of Oberpfaffenhofen must have excellent diction. In 1997, Fairchild Dornier began converting one of the original 328 prototypes into a jet, the Pratt Whitney PW306B engine, which is used mainly on business jets, was chosen as the power plant. And the design features of the original showed their potential. The re-engining turned out to be not as difficult as many would have imagined. Already in early 1998, the prototype made its maiden flight, and the test program showed very good performance. The aircraft learned to fly at speeds of up to 400 knots, at altitudes of up to 11 kilometers. Its appetite and fuel of course increased, but the increase in its reserve extended the range to 1700 kilometers. Demand was also not bad. By the time of the first flight, the 328 jet already had a portfolio of orders that was growing rapidly. The production was ramped up, with several dozen aircraft leaving the plant every year. Work on the enlarged 428 jet also continued, even reaching the stage of signing memorandums with airlines. But alas, fortune was once again not on Dornier's side. The initial curiosity of the clientele towards their jet brainchild quickly gave way to indifference. The plane was not bad, but it still did not reach the performance of a full-fledged regional jet. In addition, the financial and management problems did not go away. The 728 project did not go beyond a mock-up. The 428 jet project was cancelled, and despite all the efforts, the DOE 328 jet wasn't paying off either. The situation was critical, and despite all the efforts and support of the German authorities, Fairchild Dornier soon went bankrupt. The rights to the project and part of the assets were received by the American AV Craft Company, which supported production until 2005, fulfilling the remaining orders. As a result, 107 turboprop DOE 328 and 110 DOE 328 jets were produced. But the end of production of the aircraft did not end their story. Of the 217 built machines, more than 100 are still actively used by various commercial and government agencies around the world. Curiously, the largest operator of the cute European plane is the United States Air Force. A couple of dozen aircraft under the index C-146A Wolfhound. The rights to the project kept changing hands, sometimes being accompanied by statements that the DOE 328, in one form or another, might be put into production again. And here comes another reincarnation. In 2019, 328 Support Services, which previously provided technical support for the 328 fleet, revived the project as part of the new company, Deutsche Aircraft, and the future plane was named D328 Eco. Ironically, they cannot use the Dornier brand, it belongs to Airbus. Their idea is interesting. 
The situation on the small airliner market is still difficult, but the point is that the crisis that killed the Doe 328 killed almost all of its rivals as well. And if this market, even a small one, exists, the new aircraft would have practically no one to compete with. Of course, there is no point in completely reviving that very same airliner now, and they decided to tweak it a little to suit modern conditions. They abandoned the jet power plant, returning to the turboprop. The fiery hot should be the Pratt Whitney PW127 XTS engine, from the same family as the original 328, but from the newest modifications, more powerful up to 2750 horsepower, and at the same time more economical in fuel and maintenance. The fuselage was made longer so that it could accommodate 40 passengers, more than the original, while the takeoff weight was kept at 15.6 tons, as it was on the 328 jet. The onboard equipment has been completely updated to modern standards, right up to the possibility of piloting the aircraft by one person, with some reservations of course. In fact, this is a compliment to the Doe 328 designers. While being relaunched after three decades, no particularly major changes were needed. The end result should be an aircraft capable of flying at speeds of 320 knots, at altitudes of about 9 kilometers, and operating on runways only about 1 kilometer long. The flight range should reach 2200 kilometers, excellent for a 40-seat aircraft. Deutsche Aircraft is currently building a new production site at Leipzig Airport, with support from the original plant in Oberpfaffenhofen. The maximum production volume is as many as 48 planes per year, which is quite ambitious for a newcomer. Moreover, parallel production is planned for India for the local market. The first prototype has already been rolled out and shown to the public, and it is planned to take off in the near future. Well. We're keeping our fingers crossed for the updated beauty. If everything works out, it will be interesting. And that's all for today. Like, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to fly unusual planes. It's always exciting. Fast flights and soft landings to you.